Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to another Comic Book Cast episode. Today we'll wait, wait a minute. Who am I and what am I doing on this channel? Well, it's true, you've never seen my face before, and I want to thank the Comic Book Cast and Armin for letting me post here. My name is Christian, and I run a separate YouTube channel. It's really small, whatevs. But I saw their video, Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Spider-Man in the Avengers. I watched the whole thing and I loved it. But there was so much misinformation in the comment section, and I wanted to clarify a couple things, so I asked Armin, I said, Hey buddy, can I make a video on your channel and kind of uh, be a part of the discussion? He said, for sure. So here I am. Now, there's a lot of little things that kind of point to a Spider-Man possibly being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, number one is the fact that Andrew Garfield, the star, said he would love to be in it and was uh, seen walking around New York City with comic books in his hand with Thanos. Number two is that the producers of Sony said that they want to uh, include Spider-Man in the Avengers and would love to be a part of the universe. Number three is that the tower almost happened. Everyone knows about that. The Oscorp Tower is almost in the Avengers. But the fourth thing that brought the whole discussion together, which Armin pointed to, is the famous tweet by Mark Webb. Someone tweets him and says, Mark Webb is building a huge cinematic Marvel, a uh, huge Spider-Man universe, not just a sequel, and he goes, think bigger. So what is the only thing bigger than a huge Sony Spider-Man universe? A Fox share universe with X-Men, Fantastic Four, and S Sony. <laughs> I got you. No one thought about that, right? What if they're talking about Fox? Please don't. Please, for the love of God, don't. No, but everyone first thought of the Avengers, not only because of everything I just mentioned, but because there's also a little Easter egg, like the Empire University shirts in Item 47's Marvel One-Shot and different collaborations and stuff. And uh, everyone, there was a mixed feelings. And this is what I wanted to address. There were some people that said it was a great idea to make it happen. Other people said, I could see it happening, but The Amazing Spider-Man 1 didn't really tie into the Avengers. A third of the people said, we don't want to see it happen. Marvel is doing too good of a thing right now. It'll mess it up. Sony just wants to bring attention and get money. So I wanted to address all those points and some comments I saw in the comments section. But first, let me come to my friend Armin's aid. He said in the comment section of that video that everyone in the Avengers was B-list before Iron Man came out. And everyone just flipped out. They're like, what do you mean Iron Man was B-list, you son of a... What are you talking about? Hulk, what are you... Are you insane? I'm telling you guys, he's speaking the truth. I started buying comics in 2002 when I was about 11 or 12 years old after Spider-Man 1. I was in the comic book store every week, if not every month, picking out my favorite titles. And Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor were complete afterthoughts. I had a personal interest in Hulk because he's a little more well-known. You know, Hulk Hogan, he's a little more pop-culturally known. But the other three, you kind of just knew kind of about them. They were off in the distance. Well, who was popular at that time? Daredevil, Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, Human Torch, Silver Surfer, Punisher. A lot of these characters were a lot more famous than... Iron Man is today. And that's because Iron Man, he just didn't look cool. He had like the man in the iron mask face going on and that skin tight armor. And you were like, what the hell is going on with this guy? Who is this freak? A couple things changed that. One is the extremist and civil war stories that went on that put Iron Man at the forefront, changed his uh, backstory, changed his armor up and made him look real tight. And two, and probably 75% of the reason Iron Man's popular today was because of the movie starring Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. reinvented that role. That's why he deserves all the money he gets, guys, because Marvel Cinematic Universe would be nothing without Robert Downey Jr. So yes, in essence, Marvel started off with a bunch of B-list characters. Maybe the Hulk, the only one I would hard, uh, argue would be A-list would be the Hulk just because of pop culture, because the pop culture knew who the Hulk is. Everyone else was B-list. Now it's changed. Iron Man is arguably probably the second most popular character behind Spider-Man. That's one thing I saw in the comment section of the videos. No one could understand how Spider-Man could add five hundred dollars million dollars to that movie. People were saying that everyone who saw Spider-Man saw the Avengers. But what you're not understanding is repeat viewers and the popularity of Spider-Man. You know that the most popular Iron Man movie, which is Iron Man 2, grossed a hundred million dollars less than the least popular Spider-Man movie? I mean, Spider-Man is just so well known in multiple countries internationally. Iron Man's getting up there. I predicted to hit a billion dollars for Iron Man 3. But trust me, Spider-Man would add a lot of views. But I think people are missing the cool factor of why it would be so cool to have Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe lacks one thing. Can you guess? Five, four, three, two, one. Villains. 
Marvel is running dry. Did anyone know about the Mandarin or Malekith before Thor and Iron Man were announced? I didn't, and I actually read the comics. The only A-list villains that they have are Loki and the Red Skull, and the guy who plays the Red Skull has already said he doesn't want to play again. So characters like Galactus and Venom and Magneto, these big characters, and Doctor Doom, they're owned by the other companies. But wait a minute. If Sony partners with Marvel, it's not a one-way street, guys. I saw that in the comments. It would only benefit Sony. No. Marvel would benefit of having the second best rose gallery behind Batman's. They had Venom, Carnage, Dr. Octopus, Vulture, like you're going on, Shocker, Craven, Mysterio, Electro, Sandman, Rhino. I mean, you guys know all these characters just as well as you know Iron Man. That would be cool. Wouldn't you want to see the Hulk and Rhino fighting? Wouldn't you want to see all of them teaming up? Here's my prediction, guys. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 leads in to the Avengers, and we're going to see Rhino, Venom, and all those people teaming up for one special moment to take down Thanos. Wouldn't that blow your mind? No, but seriously, I don't know what's going to happen, guys. Again, all this is rumors, but hey, Mark Webb told us to think bigger, so that's what I'm doing. Guys, tell me your thoughts. This video is coming to a close. If you like my face or if you want to see me more on the comic cast, let me know by liking the video and commenting on the video. Tell me what you thought about the video and uh, have a nice day.